Hello, I'm Rudy Severance, and welcome to my office. Uh, I'm writing a book on s the design of snubber circuits for power electronics. Uh, in fact, the book's title will be Snubber Circuits for Power Electronics. And uh, what I'd like to do now is to share with you uh, the contents of one of the chapters so that you can get a really good feeling for what this book is all about. Okay. Well, the, the book will have a number of chapters on different types of snubbers, on switching, uh, on general uh, advice of component selection. And one of the chapters, uh, which I, I have a copy of the draft in front of me here, will be on energy recovery type snubbers because it, while the normal dissipative type snubbers are m the most commonly used, as soon as the power levels start to go very high, particularly in power conversion units above a th about a kilowatt or so, an awful lot of power can be dissipated in the, the dissipative resistors for the snubbers. And that power becomes quite significant as the power level goes up. So for reasons of both efficiency and thermal management, you're going to want to, in many occasions, use a snubber circuit which recovers the energy rather than dissipates it. And by recovery, it usually means that the the energy that would have been dissipated is either delivered to an output load of some kind or back to the input source. In other words, it's put to some useful purpose. And this particular chapter that we're talking about here on energy recovery snubbers goes through and talks about a number of different things, but particularly it also talks in general principles. For example, there are many, many papers have been written on energy recovery snubbers. Most of them, almost all of them, don't mention the practical problems with energy recovery snubbers in that they, a snubber, an energy recovery snubber in its purest form will have no damping in it because you're trying to have as high efficiency as possible. But unfortunately what happens is without any damping, okay, you have noise and ringing. All right? So that the circuit, in fact, doesn't behave as you think. So one of the things that this chapter is intended to bring out clearly is that, in fact, you still have to have some dissipative damping in the circuit. What it is, it becomes a balancing act between efficiency and saving as much power as possible, on the other end, having waveforms okay, which are acceptable from a noise and ringing point of view. And the chapter goes through, it, for example, we'll start off with an example of turn-off snubbers, okay, energy recovery turn-off snubbers, and then it will go on to energy recovery turn-on snubbers. Okay. These are circuits which uh, you know, are working, one, in one case, at recovering the energy and the snubbing at the end of the, su the switching cycle, and the other is the beginning of the switching cycle. And then, of course, what's very popular is to try to recover all of the energy and to have snubbing at both the turn on and the turn off. All right? So this section of the chapter will deal with several examples of snubbers, energy recovery snubbers, which are intended to work at both ends. Okay, We call them combination snubbers. And it's a, it turns out that some of them are fairly simple and some are very complex. Okay? The, the final section of, uh, of energy recovery snubbers, of course, will deal with bridge circuits, or we should say, you know, these half-bridge totem poles, which can be half-bridge, full-bridge, polyphase, and these types of snubbers. And these form another class of energy recovery snubbers. And in fact, energy recovery snubbers themselves can be divided into those that use the switch as the energy recovery mechanism, the switch being protected, or those which use an auxiliary switch. And all of this information will be presented okay, in this chapter to give a really good overview of what energy recovery snubbers are all about, and more importantly, practical. What can you expect from an energy recovery snubber? Okay, just how good could it be? And the, in theory, it could be 100%, but in practice, maybe 75 to 80 percent of the power loss can be recovered and then uh, you, you're about there. And, and it actually turns out that the real driver is controlling the circuit waveforms and getting rid of the, the ringing, the damping, in other words, that's required to be used in there.